everybody, Tim here with another Amazon Oracles video. Now the purpose of this video series is to give you some more in-depth content, maybe a little bit deeper than we typically get like on YouTube videos. These are a little bit longer format. They're sometimes a little bit more in depth. I won't always say advanced, but you guys asked for it. This is what it is. And we bring in some of the industry's best experts. Now, when it comes to Amazon PPC, there's a lot of information out there and we want to break it down into different topics, different categories. And one of the topics that a lot of you ask about is DSP. And frankly, not a lot of people even know what DSP is. So I've got my good buddy, Mina Elias here, who is from Trivium Group. He's got a PPC agency, lives out on the West Coast, and he is going to explain exactly what DSP is. He's going to talk about the DSP seats, what that is, um, basically everything. And I'm going to learn a lot from this video, so I'm ready to dive in. So Mina, thank you so much for being part of this series. Thank you for giving this information, and we'll let you take it away. Thanks, Private Label Legion. Uh, my name is Mina Elias, and today I'm going to walk you through what is Amazon DSP. Uh, deep walkthrough, I'm going to show you the back end, uh, what it looks like when you have a seat. Uh, certain Only certain agencies can get the seat, so you kind of see behind the scenes what it looks like. Um, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough uh, of what it is, who should use it, why it's so powerful, um, and then you know go into the back end and talk about you know audiences and, and uh, publisher sites and all of this kind of stuff, and where you can find all of the good information. Uh, so who is this session for? This session is for anyone who's interested in Amazon DSP, wants to learn more about it, um, or maybe wants to start using Amazon DSP and leveraging its power, or if you're already running Amazon DSP, uh, understanding deeply uh, how you can optimize it and being able to keep your agency accountable and say, hey, you know, you guys are using uh, very short look back windows, it's making the ROAS look way better and the ECOS look way less than it actually is because it's people who are already gonna purchase. So stay tuned uh, and let's jump right in. All right, so first thing is quick presentation, right, on, on what is Amazon DSP so you guys can kind of get familiar with it before I show you the back end uh, so you have an understanding of what it is. Um, basically, Amazon DSP is Amazon's demand side platform and it uses Amazon's audience and first party data um, and programmatically advertises on and off Amazon. So basically, it will pixel you and it will track you and it will continue to advertise on Amazon and then uh, on Amazon owned and operated sites as well as off of Amazon on publisher sites. So like think maybe CNN uh, and, and things like that, right? It'll, it'll show up uh, ads all over. Remember like sometimes you type in um, you, uh, like what is this and that and then you click on an article and then you see some ads on the right and the left. That's basically what it's gonna look like. Uh, and Amazon's DSP is really powerful in like building brand awareness and things like that. Um, the advantage is Amazon's first party data. So basically you can capitalize on Amazon's audience data and say, I want you to advertise only to people who uh, purchased from me in the past, but hasn't purchased in the last like 30 days or people who visited my listing, but haven't uh, purchased me or my competitors or people who have visited my competitors in the last 30 days, but haven't visited my listing at all. Um, and things like that. And so you can get very granular and you can get really powerful uh, targeting and audience targeting because Amazon owns all of that data. So you're leveraging that. And then you can kind of go as, as uh, top of funnel as you like. So you can start super low loyalty, uh, targeting people who've purchased you in the past, uh, maybe try and, and cross sell them if you're like a one-time product or upsell them or, or remarket to them if they've already purchased your product and it's, it's something that's consumable. And then you can go up into retargeting, um, capturing people who visited you but haven't converted, uh, all the way up to you know competitor targeting, co complementary product targeting, in market, uh, people who are in the market for something, you know, based on Amazon's data, lifestyle, contextual, demographic, and then uh, you can go all the way up until like uh, streaming, like Twitch, uh, and OTT and, and stuff like that, where it's like super high top of the funnel. Um, and, and this is where you can reach shoppers. You can reach shoppers on amazon.com. So on the home page, in the search results, in, in uh, product detail pages, things like that. But you can also uh, show up on, on their publisher sites. So they have uh, like a hundred top publisher sites where people are you know visiting those sites uh, all the time. They're getting traffic and you can show up there. And then you can have you know, third party on Yahoo, uh, Bright Roll, and and um, you know all these like Think CNN and and uh, and all of these like uh, websites uh, that am like basically these websites are writing news or whatever or articles or blogs or content to bring traffic in, and then they're selling that traffic to Amazon. So Amazon's basically paying these people uh, based on visitors, and then they're obviously upcharging you. So let's look at the benefits of Amazon PPC and DSP together. So. 
they're better together because Amazon PPC is amazing in capturing demand, right? And so someone's already looking for uh, for a product and they're saying, I want an electrolyte powder and you can show up there for that. But um, beyond that, what if they've already purchased? How can you get that person back? Uh, with Amazon PPC, you really can't, but with DSP, you can advertise to people who've purchased your product in the past but haven't purchased it recently, or you can upsell to them as well. And then same as retargeting, Amazon PPC is great for capturing uh, demand and getting people to click on the listing, but you know what if they don't convert right then and there? Amazon DSP can continue to retarget them um, so you can get you know more people to convert over time. And then the beautiful part, right, and that's one of the most powerful parts in my opinion, is that you can go way higher in the funnel. And let's say you know you're you're like, oh man, I'm spending like thirty, forty thousand dollars a month in ads. Uh, I feel like I've hit a wall. I'm not growing as much. I'm like, maybe you're capturing as much demand as you can, considering you know your your market cap and all of that stuff. How do you bring new to brand customers? And that's where DSP shines. Is it can now target people who were never going to look at your listing. They weren't, um, you know, having like that demand and saying, I want an electrolyte powder. Maybe they were just uh, buying keto stuff, or maybe they were buying uh, like cycling stuff, or maybe they're ultra marathon runners. And so you can start targeting those uh, interests and in market and demographics and bringing new to brand uh, into your uh, listing. And so this is kind of what I like to, to look at the funnel as. Um, and kind of the, the bottom of the funnel, you can use DSP for retargeting and for loyalty. And then you can also use uh, DSP on the top of the funnel for awareness and consideration. That's where we use uh, display ads, right? Um, and so successful ads, com uh, um, Successful brands combine both uh, PPC and DSP. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. Um, and this is what MMA nutrition looks like on the back end of DSP. So this is, um, you know, Amazon DSP. Um, and and uh, I'm going to explain what these are now. I stopped running ads. So I'm actually going to X this out. Uh, I stopped running ads. Uh, because you know it, it wasn't uh, that profitable for me. Um, you know it's an electrolyte uh, supplement, and so and I'm also scaling down. But anyways, um, basically I'll show you you know what everything means. Orders is, is uh, think of it like a um, a campaign with a purpose. So um, in in PPC we're launching campaigns, we're targeting keywords, but with orders you're saying okay what is the purpose of this order? Uh, and the purpose of the order can be anything like. Uh, we want loyalty, we want retargeting, we want competitor targeting, we want to test competitors who are doing X, we want to do in market for this specific thing, we want that demographic. So think of it as a funnel segment. Remember, um, you know, this that I showed you. So think of, of the different funnel segments, whether it's uh, loyalty, competitor targeting, or loyalty, retargeting, competitor targeting, uh, complementary product targeting, in market, upselling, whatever. These are all little funnel segments. And so that's what an order is. And so within an order, there's line items. So we're clicking on an order here, um, and then it's gonna load the line items. So line items are the different places that we're gonna show the ads. So we have uh, desktop and mobile and uh, the app, the, the website app. So mobile and the web app are two different things. And so we like to keep them separate. And the reason I break things out uh, like that and then there's by the way there's Amazon publisher sites and there's Amazon owned and operated and the reason that I'm splitting these things out like that is because um, on Amazon's owned and operated you're gonna have much better performance probably than Amazon's publisher sites and so you want to have that granularity you want to have that segmentation on and you can see here like some of them didn't like all the Amazon publisher sites didn't perform well so we ended up turning them off and we kept on only the Amazon owned and operated and then certain ones and you'll see like Let's look at the ROAS, right? This is uh, retargeting, so the ROAS makes sense. And the ROAS here was under one for Amazon's publisher sites. Uh, and the ROAS here was, you know, 1.7, 2.4. This one, not so good. Um, and that's probably because uh, it's mobile web, web, which is not as popular as the shopping app. Shopping app and desktop are the two main ones. And so it makes sense. Um, and, and then the desktop has uh, more inventory. So that's why we're kind of segmenting everything into line items. And then I'll show you um, what the order settings look like. And so basically, think of it this way. You have your your first thing is you have your order and you say, okay, this order is going to be for loyalty or it's going to be for retargeting. And then the second thing is you have your line items and the line items is where you're going to segment uh, where are you showing it? Are you showing it on mobile or desktop? Uh, are you doing uh, or the web app? Are you doing Amazon owned and operated Amazon publisher sites? You can also select certain publisher sites. You can say, okay, I want to do this line item just to show it here. Um, and then the final piece of the puzzle is the audiences, which get uh, audiences and creatives get attached 
to the line item. So this is kind of what an, uh, uh, an order looks like. Um, and the goal is, so this is, you know, we're, we're trying to target products that are sold on Amazon. Not, you know, you can also use it if you're not selling. So what I can do is, let's say I'm a dentist office. I can target everyone who's bought a water pick in the last 30 days within a 10 mile radius of my uh, office and say, I want to target those people with, uh, uh, you know, free teeth cleaning uh, when you sign up for like our subscription, something like that, you know, whatever. And this could be totally off of Amazon and you could be tracking it with uh, every time someone uh, like creates like the uh, link, uh, book, book a call or something like that. That's when uh, you can consider it a conversion. So it's things like that. The goal is purchases on Amazon for us. Our goal uh, KPI is total ROAS. So the difference between ROAS and total ROAS is total ROAS takes into account um, everything, like in, uh, other uh, products sold as well. So if I'm marketing uh, Hydrolyte Unflavored or Hard Work Unflavored and someone buys the Blue Raz or the Mango Pineapple, it'll count that as well because it's fine, right? I'm, I'm, ad, I'm running ads and I want to capture uh, as much customers as possible. It doesn't have to be just for that one product. And so uh, here's the line item. It's called a flight. Uh, sorry, here's the budget. It's called a flight. And basically you can set how much you want to spend and when the start and the end date is and Amazon will pace it. Um, and then you can have a monthly budget cap. So you can say, hey, I want to spend, you know, 9,500 over 10 months and 950 a month, um, something like that. Um, agency fee, this is if your agency is applying a fee, make sure that the agency is not um, running, um, like giving you a management fee and saying, okay, it's going to cost whatever, $3,000 a month to run your ads, but then applying an agency fee here, which will pull from the money that you're sending them as well. So that's something uh, not a lot of people know. Amazon will definitely take 10% of your ad spend. So if you send them $10,000, they will take $1,000. It's don't even think about it, right? It's just part of doing business on Amazon. It's not negotiable, but then the agencies will charge you a management fee, but that they could also bake in another fee here. So make sure you um, keep track of that. Um, and then in terms of uh, products, you want to track uh, all the products that you can relate a conversion to. So. I'm tracking here, if any of these products convert, then we're good to go, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm gonna consider that uh, a conversion and, and that's good. Um, then you can add pixels if you're tracking off of Amazon, so I can create a pixel from my website, add it here, and then if any conversion happens on the website, Amazon will be able to track it. And then finally, the frequency. The frequency is how many times you wanna show the ads. So in this case, uh, we're, we're gonna say, don't show it more than 30 times in one day. And we usually set that really high on the on the order uh, setting because when we dive into the line item, that's when we want to kind of control it per um, creative. So there's gonna and let's jump in. All right, we're jumping into a line item here, and this is where we're gonna show like where we're targeting the inventory, what are the products, uh, you know, what's the ad, um, all this other stuff. So, okay, so now that it's loaded. Basically products, uh, this is just a, a description of the product. Um, inventory, so inventory is very uh, important. This is where Amazon will, uh, will advertise. You can see here the inventory says IMDB Mobile Web or Amazon Mobile Web. Um, and basically what you can do is, I'm clicking change here so you can kind of see all the options, but this is where you can select, um, you know, where do you wanna show these ads? And then you'll see Amazon has uh, the IMDB Mobile Web, Amazon Mobile Web, but then there should be a ton of publisher sites here that you can choose from. I don't know why this is lagging today. And then we're gonna jump into targeting. So in targeting, this is where you select the audiences. So you can see in this case, I'm saying, I wanna target everyone who's visited, um, you know, hard work unflavored in the last 30 days, but hasn't visited, uh, but hasn't purchased uh, in the last 90 days. So basically I'm saying I wanna target certain people, but not uh, other people and and that's where we get super super granular so for loyalty I target people who've purchased in the last 365 days but haven't in the last 30 days uh, or, or 60 days you know and say oh, hey you know anyone who hasn't purchased in the last 60 days they've forgotten about us or maybe if I have like 50 servings or 60 servings I say anyone who hasn't purchased in the last 120 days has forgotten about us um, and then for retargeting it's basically anyone who's visited in the last 30 days but hasn't uh, converted in the last you know 90 days or whatever so we can get super granular here with the with the audiences, and then delivery and all that stuff and bidding. Um, this is kind of where it gets like super detailed. Uh, frequency, how many times you want to show this ad. This is all the stuff that we optimize, and then 
creatives right here is where you can tack on the custom creatives now for me i like to use responsive uh, e-commerce the most because it's super dynamic it changes um, based on your listing um, and then you know it looks very native some people like if it's christmas you're gonna have custom creative and it's gonna all be christmas creatives the only thing is you have to create a lot of different sizes so for every single line item um, and, and every single uh, placement, there is a lot of different sizes that you have to create creatives for. So you need a, a full team, but essentially that, you know, that's kind of what it looks like um, in terms of, of the back end of Amazon DSP. Now the takeaways here, um, you know, now that you've kind of seen this is you want to layer um, DSP on top of Amazon PPC. People will say, you know, you need to be spending 30,000. Listen, I don't believe in that. Um, I believe in how many people do you think you can capitalize on? So how many people have purchased your product in the last year uh, that maybe forgot and, and you want to remind them? Um, you know, how, how much money can you spend bringing new customers in from audiences uh, like competitor targeting, um, you know, that haven't uh, seen your product and then start retargeting them on your product? I would say a minimum of $6,000 in, in ad spend per single product uh, per ASIN is required. Like that's the bare minimum I've seen um, start to do well. Um, and then it's also a long-term play, right? So it's not, you're not capturing demand the, the same way that, um, you know, someone's looking for electrolyte powder and then you show up and then they buy you. It's more like, you know, what are other people looking for? Let's start showing them our product. Let's start retargeting them. Let's start getting them in. And you're kind of shooting for new to brand. So I'll show you here if we have the new to brand metric. So we don't have the new to brand metric, but there is a new to brand metric here that says, you know, this is how many people who have never visited your product, have never, uh, you know, purchased your products that are now uh, new customers. And so this is an amazing way. If you're adding, let's say, a thousand new to brand customers a month, 10,000 uh, or 12,000 new to brand customers a year, that's incredible because you're adding all these new customers that you can then start in putting them into your loyalty uh, funnel and bringing them back in. So this is how par uh, powerful DSP is. Make sure you're super granular. Make sure you know whoever runs your uh, DSP is not lumping everything in uh, together. They're not using short look back windows and saying, uh, you know, people who have visited but haven't purchased in the last two days because maybe they visited in the last seven days but they were about to purchase but then you showed an ad because all it takes is for Amazon DSP to just show the ad and then once they show the ad, now you get considered as, as wow, we showed the ad and now we converted and so it starts tracking that conversion. So be careful, be granular. Hope this was useful, guys. I love it. Be careful, be granular, and keep learning, which is the whole point of this series. Guys, if you would be so kind is to give us a thumbs up on this video and give us a subscribe on this channel if you haven't done so. And if you have any questions for Mina regarding DSP ads, post them in the comment section below. And we'll make sure that Dina monitors that, that Mina monitors that and gets you any answers to those that you might have. We'll see you guys on the next Oracles video.